Hello, everybody. Let me have a, another Tuesday, a merry-go-round, it feels like. It's, come on, Tuesday is another class, 12 now. Before you start, I want to do the um, supported bridge. You usually have the two wooden Iyengar blocks. Some people have the soft blocks. I would suggest, and I have put it in the notice, I will put it in the notice as well, that you get those books now, so that if you want that supported bridge, you have a stack of books, maybe with a blanket on it or a towel, that you can put ready, um, so that when you do that after the standing postures, you, you have it. Um, yeah. Otherwise, you're going to do two breathing exercises, and they sort of complement each other. First one is about expanding your lungs. I think you might have done it before. Um, the lungs are quite elastic, so as you breathe in normally through your nose, like and pause, count for five. Take more of the inhalation in, and then breathe out. You can breathe out through your mouth or through your nose. You can choose that. So breathe in, you can do your full capacity. Use your slight throaty thumb so you contract that throat up. So you breathe in, pause for five counts, hold, breathe in a bit more, and then breathe out, either through your nose or your mouth. And it's that when you have that pause and you take in a bit more, you're actually accentuating that and that less elasticity of your lungs. So if you need to get the books, maybe just pause. <laughs> Come back. <coughs> so we're going to start. Find your own rhythm. Oh, I could do it through my well. Now watch that your shoulders stay relaxed, your body's relaxed, and you really breathe all around side of your ribs, back, chest, belly. Another three times, so it's emphasizing that inhalation capacity. So you feel that build up. As you hold and then do that final one. I think this is the last one. And just take a few normal breaths. Is that possible? Feel it at the back, feel it at the side, feel it at the front. Do another where you're going to emphasize that exhalation, which gives you more energy. And we're going to use the Hara breath. The Hara is the solar plexus. There's actually more nerves and tissues than there actually is in the brain because of the digestion that happens here. It needs a lot of input. So as you breathe into the, you, as you know from the martial arts, it gives you that power, that sense of empowerment, which they have in the of martial arts in the East, and they're very aware of this hara hara hara. And even saying the name, it's sort of ah, you use that, that part, you energize that. So we're going to come onto our back. Officially, it's with your toes underneath the couch. Now, I can't take Kim and all her apparatus to the sitting room, it's a bit tricky to take my toes on the couch and then I have to move all that furniture. You used to do it, you might remember it, but you can do it without. Um, but if you've got a couch and you do ne next to the couch, you use your toes under the couch. <sighs> when you do that, 
from Hara. You really used to pay them. In and ha! Quick and sharp. Difficult for some people if you have a portion that's not quite right to coming up. <sighs> Easy when your toes are under the couch. <sighs> you feel how you bring energy into the body. <sighs> Twice more. energy and then come just for a moment <coughs> into a forward bend. If you need to bend your knees, bend them, slide forward and release your head, elbows to the floor, chest forward and just try and bring your legs further down. Another five breaths. Feel that energy in the belly, in the whole of your body. Then you could sit on your knees, you can sit on your firm. <coughs> I'm going to do some shoulder ones, some different ones. So I'm quite happy to sit like that if you need a book or a firm or anything. But sit cross legged on a firm if you're more comfortable. You bring your left hand onto your right shoulder, keep your elbow level with your shoulder, and bring your right hand just to the back of your elbow. Relax your shoulders, thumb is like in. You're going to pull your left elbow to your right shoulder without dropping it. Keep the shoulder down, the left arm wants to come up, and then resist. As you push with your right hand firmly, resist with your left upper arm and elbow into your right hand. And it will drop the left shoulder, it will lengthen and stretch that whole area. Keep it going, so you also get the blood flow going. Quite strong, the resistance. Another three breaths. Because that whole left side is activated. Your right hand onto your left shoulder, keep your elbow high on the top. And then see if you can push your right elbow to your left, keep your right shoulder down. Once you've got it, resist back into your left hand. Whole body awareness, breathe into the belly. Relax the right shoulder. Firm pressure both ways so you get that blood flow going on the right. Always elongating the spine without being rigid. Two more breaths. release. Place your hands loosely on your shoulders. Bring your elbows together up and as far back as you can. Bringing that mobility into that shoulder girdle. <coughs> Other way round. Twice more. We're going to do an upside down plank just into a sitting position. What I originally wanted to do is you should sit on a chair and you go down and up again. I think for some of the men it will be possible. I found it quite difficult, so if you want to do it, you're well, welcome. But I should, because I'm always looking for things that replace a little bit of weights. And this does, does it. <clears throat> so come with your hands facing forward, and some of you might have to do that. She breathes in, bring your toes down, lift, head up and back, rotate the upper arms out, pause for a second. And as she breathes out, just bring yourself back to upright. 
and repeat it if you're quite comfortable. Stay there for an extra breath. Lengthen, turn to the floor, straight to the elbows, opening the front of your body. Inhalation, come up. Come down on an exhalation. Rotate the upper arm slightly outwards. Spread the fingers. And if you can, release your head backwards. Another four times. For a moment, come into forward bend, perhaps bend the knees, and let go once again. Take a few nice, deep breaths. And then we're going to just do a, a neck, shoulder, head integration. Um, you bring your hands to the opposite elbow, release your head to start with. As you move, you try and move your right elbow to the floor and keep your left elbow as far away to the left, release your feet. Keep your head centered, slightly pulling onto your elbows. If you can't reach your elbows, hold your forearm. And keep your head centered as you try and bring your left elbow to the floor and pull away with your right shoulder. Release your left trunk. Try that one more sequence. You begin to explore the shoulder and the smaller muscles of the upper back. Keep your head centered. Finding your full range. I pull a little bit on the elbows. Now you're going to roll your head to the opposite side slowly. Quite a pull on the left shoulder. You need to firm under your head, always place it there. And slowly, so you feel how the little muscles take over from each other in your back. One more sequence. And then a chiro I call it self chiropractic, which you have done before. You bring your right, like a, a kind of stretch the chiropractor will do, but a bit milder. Your right over your left, the left over your right. And then see if you can. Keep the one foot on the floor and roll your lower trunk to the right, your upper trunk, reach your head slightly to the left. Start small, keep it loose and see if you can keep your center. You want to try and keep the shoulders close to the floor as you can. And keep it loose, so you're sort of rocking a little bit. Bit of a twist. Only one foot on the floor. Oops. Okay. 
And then to do the other way around. Easier to go for the one side than the other. Good click. So if you left. Make it your last one. Simply bring your knees to your chest and circle them a few times. And then there's another one, we call it the Buddha scissors, stand up and by. I can't see the Buddha scissors in the floor. You come onto your right side and you make your right angle with your leg. You put your left hand here for a moment, release your head on the upper right arm, and then bring your head up. And see if you can bring your left arm right over your ears, not in front of the ear, and bring your right hand to your left ear, on your left hand to your right ear. Send the release to the back of your hand, keep the knees quite high, and just kick it up. As your breathe in, come up, and bring your forehead and your head towards the floor, and back up, and then go back, really releasing. So it's quite a strong twist. Pick on the left side. Breathing in, come up, and you fall into the floor. Breathing out, lift, and come onto the back of your skull. Try and bring the elbow as close to the floor as you can, but don't bring your arm back. Again, it's a kind of integration of your head and your neck and your shoulders and your trunk. Now when you're on your back like that, see if you can bring this left knee up, so that the left knee is above your right knee. You can just come forward. And then stay back. So now you have a much stronger twist. You try and bring the left elbow close to the floor. Head slightly to the left. And the as you breathe out, relax into it. There's no holding. But it's a huge Opening on the left side, the ribs, charming the elbow further down. If you keep your fingers on your right ear, release your head, breathe into the belly and try and soften. So it's a gravity passive stretch. Feel it widening to the back. The whole left ribcage is open. Three more breaths. Come up and then you can do it as well. So your hands facing like that, release your head, make a right angle, you know what I mean with right angles, so often you don't, you do it like that, so try and make a right angle. And then bring your right arm across your head to your left ear. As you breathe in, come up, take your forehead and your elbow towards the floor, rotate, keep your control and hold to the back of your head to the side so you'll be able to bring the elbow clear, easily on the floor. And just explore that for a few breaths. Creating a twist. One more time dynamically. You're opening that right side of your ribcage and shoulder. 
And then when you're down again, release, bring your right leg over on top and beyond your, so your right knee is beyond your left knee, relax, drop into it, come once into the counter stretch, and then see if you can stay for a while into that twist. You might feel it's quite different, opening the armpit, keeping your um, belly soft, using your exhalation to release. Try and keep that whole body awareness, it's kind of like a strange feeling. Mindful of the breath. Make it three more breaths. If you can get that right elbow on the floor, it will help. Come back up, and we're going to do the um, going around the clock face, which many of you will know quite well. Get into the abdominals, so interlace your hands behind your head, put your curl elbows on the floor, keep your inner knees and ankles together, go to the right, keep your upper trunk centered, make sure you keep your knees together, slowly going to the left. And maybe a loose fit helps you to bring the elbows closer to the, fit, uh, to, to the floor. You want to keep the opposite elbow if you can on the floor. And slowly, your feet are just above the floor, turning a large circle, turning to those abdominals, transverse abdominals, keeping the upper trunk centered, creating the twist once again. Press the inner knees together. Find your maximum circle. Massaging your lower back. One more circle in this direction. Keep your shoulders relaxed. And then the other way around. At mind, feet slowly. Body awareness to twice more. <clears throat> and simply hug your knees, bring your forehead towards you and bring the rest of your knees and release. You do a bridge, your hands, invert your hands and bring it right above you with your feet parallel. Comfortably close, not too close. And slowly roll up into a full arch. Keep the big toe down off your chin. And slowly bring your arm up. Reach up. Keep your chin down your head. Release your shoulders. Release. And direct your hip towards your knee. You get the quad stretch. Keep the mount of the big toe down, the outer knee down. Nice deep breath. Be centered. Another inch up. Slowly to control, lower the vertebra. Keep your hands interlaced and hanging on the floor. Take a few breaths in between. Once again, roll up. Keep the mouth of the big toe down, head centered, chin slightly down, so your neck and legs. Reach up, keep your shoulders down. Another inch. Without widening the knees, and then slowly come back down. One more time, maybe bring your feet the first 
As you come high enough, you might hide in the buckets as well. Extend and release the back of your head, reach up with the big nose down. Whole body awareness, breathe into the belly, lift those thighs. Slowly come down and do an inverted stretch. Flex your feet, lift your heels, grow an inch, get to the calves, thighs, waist, the ribs, the arms. And then with release, lift and drop your shoulders, feet, ankles, and allow your head to loosely roll a few times from shoulder to shoulder. And then for a moment, feel the energy flow out of the whole of your body. Become like a, a rag doll, natural curves, shifting your awareness to the energy flow of the whole of your body, becoming soft for a moment. Okay, we're going to bend the right knee, lift the left fist off the floor, lift your head. Reach into your fingers and flatten your lumbar or waist region. You could flex your foot if you think as it is. Shoulder blades down. Breathe. We want to smile because it's quite strong. Release for a moment, coming to a lying down butterfly. Breathing into the belly, dropping your knees, grounding that sacrum, back of your head and your shoulders. And take a few nice, deep, naturally over breaths. And let go of any blockages. to come up for a hair, the two versions, before we stand up. In the first version, you come right onto the crown, keep your knees a bit apart and your feet a bit apart, but you curl your toes, and some of you may need a, a, a strap, um, put it around and it pull it to the inside, but if you can get your hand to the inside of your instep, Come right into the crown and then push your hips to your shoulders, but pull. Pull your feet into your hands and pull your hands into your feet. So you resist and that will allow the lower back to round. So take the hips forward. Breathe. It activates right from your shoulder blades to your hips. So come. Quite a strong resistance. You need to release from moment in between. Let's see if you can do it again. You can do it the same way, you can do it on the outside, curling your toes right into the crown, chin close to your throat. Pull, take your hips to your shoulders, shoulders to your hips, press your heels into your hands, and activate that whole middle lower back. Keep it going. Your mind has to be there for it to work. And feel the contrast as you come into Eastern Praying the Child pose and relax everything. Sinking into gravity without resisting it. Another five breaths. To do a wide leg position, which opens really the back of your perineum, 
sort of hips, people that have problems prosthetis or anything like that. And you need more space in those organs. Always good for all of us. So you come into a wide-legged position with your feet quite wide. For a moment, feel the four points of your feet. Bring your hands to the small of your back. Zip up the tummy as you bring your head up and back, your elbows toward each other. And then slide your hands via the back of your thighs, calves, to your ankles, push your thumb to the front, and then pull your head closer to the arch, allow your head to drop. As you breathe in, bring your hands to the shin, push, lift your head, sitting bones to the ceiling, and as you breathe out, slide your hands behind you, calf, ankle, and release your head closer to the arch. Slide your hands up, take it behind your back, bring your elbows together, navel up, chest up, neck back. Reach into your heels to back them. Slowly opening the whole back of your legs, pronaal area. Pull your head closer to the floor, bend your elbows. Lift the thighs as you can. Press as you resist. Lengthen the back, opening the chest. Come back as you breathe, arms. Pulling yourself closer to the floor. Hands, palms facing into the small of your back, elbows. Closer, digging your heels, chest up, chest, head back, hands at the back of your legs, head closer to the floor, bend your elbows. You can lift the thighs if you need to bend the knees. Resist the shape, come up, putting bones back, chest up, chin up, and come back to your first one. You can do it in your own way. Opening the back of your body, lower trunk. Twice more. And then stay in the forward bend of your choice. You might want to <coughs> just fold your arms. Tuck your head, shoulders back if you can, lift the thighs if you need to bend your knees. Allow your head to hang as you release the another three breaths. Shoulders back. And with the whole body awareness. Focus on the energy flow. Heel toe, your feet closer together. Come into a standing rounded stretch. Okay, we're now going to do a one where the breath is quite tricky. It took me a while to control it in the right way. It's a right left stretch, it's quite calming. Um, and there is a pause. So I'll talk you through it. So just take note. The right foot forward, left foot back. And usually in those positions, if it's a warrior, you can pull the heels in. But if it's, um, you can also do this unscrewing onto jaw or just activate your hips slightly. So it's a fair sized step. Right hip slightly back, left hip slightly forward. If you breathe in, bring your arms up, extend, really lengthen. But also engage your feet slightly, and as you breathe out, slowly come into a forward bend, wherever you can reach. It could be the floor, feet. And as you breathe in, you can pull the heels toward each other and bring your arms as far back as your shoulders, palms facing out, activate them. Pause for three counts at the end of that inhalation with your back knee straight, and the palm closer, and then breathe out. Bring your 
in, the arms up, extend, don't change your, your leg, breathing out, hold, breathing in, extend to the back where it started, and breathing out, right foot back, left foot forward, come into it from within, breathing in, resist, if you're pushing something away, always as far back as your shoulder, coming in, back and straight, pause for three times at the end. Out. Breathe in, keeping your bend, back knee straight. Breathe out, drop your shoulders, extend. Breathe in, straighten your knees. Breathe out, come to the floor. Let's talk you through it one more time. Breathe in, chest open, back bend, pause. Breathe out. Breathe in, feel it up, down, down. Breathe out. Do twice from this side, but I hope you've got it. Strong your legs. Now stay in that forward bend on the right. If you need to bend your knees, you can bring your right foot back, left foot forward. Put to the inside of your leg. If you want to take your hands further back, if you need to bend your knees. Now full breath. Before you notice, if you get the breath right, very calming. Oh, three times. Out. Stand the ground you use. To really move is the breath, your own tempo. Strong your heels and push back. And straighten the elbows. more sequences after this one. Activate your legs on the stone. i 
pranastha. And then stay in the forward bend on the left side. Work at it. If you need to bend the knee, do so. You can bring the arms back, do so. Hip release. If you can straighten the knee, left hip back, right hip forward, shoulders back, hip release. Comfortable, natural breath. Another three. Once shake your legs. And now do a one that you know quite well. It's a right left position. Um, <clears throat> always, if you can, and there are some of you can't, because you just fall over. Um, <clears throat> you're going to do the eyes closed. Well, you can probably do quite regularly. So, and start this show feet quite wide. Why I do it is it's quite good to move to the right and the left. It's always a different experience. And some, sometimes the one side is stronger, the other one is you can balance maybe on. You want to develop those, those sides. So just center for a moment, drop your shoulders. Then bring your arms out wide, right foot out, left one in. And as you breathe out, come into the trichinus on the right. So just screwing up the jaws, so your left hip comes forward, your back rounds a little bit. You come up, you could go into warrior two, or you can just immediately come into the half moon. Flexing your foot, opening out, so maybe just the fingertips on the floor. Now to come out of it back to center is the challenge. To find that center without falling over, particularly your eyes are going to be closed. You will find there's a difference between the one side and the other. So negotiate your space mindfully with your eyes open a few times. Make it smaller if it helps. Really feel the space you need. Relax the Find your center before you do the other side. Radiate, squeeze the belly, knees soft, chicken asana. And open up and find that floating half moon sensation, which means lightness. Before you flip down, do it one more time as your eyes open. The most important thing is to move is the breath. The breath is what carries you in this one. If you need the breath in between, <coughs> it's quite good. <coughs> you can back to center. What we'll do now is your eyes close. <coughs> so make it smaller if you need to. More tender. Take a breath in between before you go to the other side. Just radiate in this space. Much less earthbound.
Tout le monde s'écoute. space, small space, your eyes close, you're radiating with this question. Kick it at the last one. much more dominant in your ways. Okay, now let's push your face in a strange way. <laughs> Come into a forward bend. Release your head. Come back into your room and stretch. Let's do a balance. One that's actually got three possibilities. Um, standing on your right leg. The idea is to have your back straight, your knees straight, and your arms straight, which is often not possible. So you do a little bit of each. So stand on your right leg. You might still be a little bit spacious and um, the previous one. The head can feel iron. And then begin to straighten your leg that you holding with both your hands if you like. Begin to straighten your back, reach at your heel, shoulders back and take your arms. Now if you want to, you could bring your arm out, it might be easier. And some of you might like to take it sideways, it doesn't hurt your hip. And bring it back. Get into your hamstring, get into your bucket, so you need it. Then to do the other way around. So you might find that one leg is stronger and easier. Slowly. Use the wall if you need to, to get into it. Straighten your back, shoulders back. And maybe you bring your arm out. Take your leg sideways. You want to come back. Let me try it once more. Shoulders back. If you need to bend your knees, if you want to. And if you find it very difficult, put your back against the wall. I mean, <laughs> can't see if you're doing that anyway, so I might as well allow you to straighten. Another twist, so we've done the side one, the straight one. There's also a twist version where you bring your left hand to the outside of your right arm. I find it easier when I bring my arm that way. Um, sideways. And push your um, leg to the left leg to the right. You bring your arm up as well. Creating a bit of a counterbalance. I find it easier when I fix my gaze. Do 
muito distante. Push your leg to the left, straighten as you can again. Bend, straighten up. Focus on the breath. Becomes a counterweight, having your hands around your foot, arm back. Release. Allow your back to release into a forward bent for a moment. A few more breaths away, you need to hang your shoulders back. Feel your legs. Allow them to relax. going to do now a so a stretch so that insertion of your hip into your thigh. You do one side at a time. It's also strengthening your feet. So bring your right foot forward. And as you breathe in, I like having my index finger pointing up. Make the face I step slowly, rotate the back heel off the floor and come as far down as you can. Keep the front knee of your ankles. Find the right length. And then as you breathe, arms come back. Shoulders relax if you can straighten the elbows. Your armpits forward, your elbows back. Breathe out. And then come back up. You don't have to bring any other floor, but you can if you want. Twice more on the side. On the way around, like a curtsy, you would go to the region. The side slowly will take your heel off the floor, center. Find the right sort of length. Last five more breaths. Front hold on your knee as well. Just find that one side is quite different from the other. It's too difficult to decide. Last two. You feel how that muscle is activated. And then we're going to do the dancing warrior. It is quite popular. So the dancing warrior, you might remember it, you will remember it. You come into an eastern plane position, child pose. From there, spread the fingers into the dog as you down. So acute angle, armpits and hips towards each other, which creates a more acute angle, and your head to the floor, look towards your thigh. Rotate the upper arms outwards, the inner arms press down, and your thighs back to heels back. Allow your back to lengthen for a few more breaths. Whole body awareness, breathe into the belly. Head release. Then swing your right leg up. Come forward into an up-down warrior. Look up as you stable enough. 
Perhaps she heals to each other as she extends to the right elbow area. Without changing your leg, back knee straight, come into the reverse body. In your right hand and your fingertips on the floor. And then swing your left arm up into the bend in the triangle. Extend the left hand, shorten the right, right shoulder to the right. Come into the back. You will extend from the waist to your heels. Slowly come down so you can do a dog with your head up if you want to do it through just one or two. Press back with your palms. Back in your feet, lift your knees, big hands with heads up, arms up, coming in. Exhalation. Come back into the dog with your head down. And you work at it for a few breaths in between before we get going non stop. So armpits and hips towards each other. Thighs back, heels down, head to the floor, look towards your navel or fire. Bringing action of your arms, and if you've got a sway back, sitting bones to your hands. Swing your left leg up. Come into this up down warrior, engage your heels. Knee facing forward, you stay look up. Extend. Come out in the space, dropping your shoulders, back arm is high. That's active as your front arm. Stay to the back knee, you should come into that front back again. Reverse warrior. Hands the fingertips to the floor as you swing your right arm from the bottom up. Extend the right side, shorten the left hip to the left. Into a plank. You send your plank into a straight plank. Slowly bending the elbows. Coming down and then into a dog with your head up. Call the bones beyond your palms. Press back with your palms. Look up. You can lift the knees and take up the arms up. Coming in the back bend. Back into a dog with your head down. Right leg up. You all know it. Bend the triangle. Spread the fingers by the blood flow to bring it in. Extends. Amazing. As a rounder into the world as you know, straight into the world. Take the upper arms back and out, press your palms back. Back and straight, shoulders down. Pull the heels in towards each other, widen. Bend the triangle on the left. Lift the right shoulder higher. You can move as the breath in your own way. Again, moving into space from the ground in position to the rest of your body. It literally becomes a dance. As long as you can move as the breath. Press your heels down. Straight. And if you need to go faster than you do so. Make it the flow.
keep going. Feel what each posture is trying to express. Do two more sequences after this one. Stay in the flow. Feet open, no crunch toes. Last sequence. You should call when you come into the warriors. Come into a child pose, Eastern Prayer position, and you've completed your last dog. Push your head up. And for a moment, allow everything to soften. Feel the energy flow in your body. Release your wrists. Back. Sure. Everything to release, particularly your breath. And then move on to um, lifting opposite arm and leg on your tummy, so back bend, and then in between, which you can, it's not too strong for your back, you lift both your arms and your legs, which is always more of a heart rate. Accelerates that a little bit. Say, come onto your tummy. No silky moments in this class. <laughs> as you breathe in, pick up the tummy, bring your right leg and your left arm up, your head up, and as you breathe out, release. All the way around. It doesn't have to be high as long as you engage your tummy. And then both together, slightly rotating your feet and your thighs out. 
we continue like that. You need to engage your core. And if you can, clear the side of the floor. Reach into your feet. Feel how you tighten the buttocks if you need to do this. Get you into trance, keep your back knee straight. And we'll do two more sequences. Moving with the breath. And release into a frog if you need to wide, unless you prefer the usual child pose. Last you have your knees wide so you can lengthen the lower back and widen. Allow your breath to settle into your elbows. Feel it widening in your lower back. Perfectly relax, bend your elbows. Not a full breath, pressure of your neck. Now you can use those books, blocks, clubs to come into the supported bridge. Okay, so the, I hope you've got books. If you've got phones, have phones. I mean, then you can have it this way, you can have it higher. Usually come onto your toes. It's quite nice for your back. I would have it on with the whole sacrum, so people have just one in the center. I think it's better for your sacrum if you cover that whole area. So come onto your toes. In your books, you have to sort of slide it slightly underneath you. And make sure that the perpendicular to the floor, if your chest comes up, you can do what I'm doing. So you can just stay like that. Always watch if you release the back, release the back of your head, release your shoulders if you feel parallel. Or some people really prefer to get the groin stretch close to the floor. So find your own comfortable position. It might not have to be much done. And breathe into the belly, but release and your chest, but release the lower back. Don't hold on to it. Sometimes I notice myself. Holding on to the lower back. Allow the lower back to release. Feel the breath. Slow down. You could bring your legs up to the ceiling if you've got enough. Support if it's not hurting, then you can bring your legs up and in a half shoulder stand. Don't come up to the For those of you quite happy, and I know there's quite a few of you, um, you can also try and do the, the bridge, the wheel rather. So stay if you are on that, but if you want to do the wheel, you may want to do it against the wall <coughs> and put something underneath your hands this way. Always take your palms, your fingers facing down and your palms sort of on the floor, either underneath your shoulders. Now, tricky because my hair is getting so long. <laughs> okay. um, so see if you can come onto your head or maybe you can come up straight away. Release your head. Keep your feet parallel, big toe down. Straight the elbows lower your head. I'm going to stay in the other bridge. Nice 
that's what it's fine. You can hit double swing. If there is no. First, the end of the chest. This is what you can say to me with those two knees. Two the chest. For a moment, rock a few times. We're going to stay away into a counter stretch. Back. So you come into a sitting position. Take your feet like that, quite wide. As you breathe in, you bring your arms up. As you breathe out, keep your knees where they are if you can, keep the big toe down. Now fold forward and down, so you round your lower back. Again, you're opening the perineum area. Extend upwards, keep your fingers light, spread. As you breathe out, come forward and down. You might not be able to get too far. Feel it. Another twice, like this. And for a moment, see if you can stay in the kind of strange forward bend. Drop your head, bring your elbows closer. Feeling it in your hips, particularly. You know, head to drop, elbows closer to the floor. Now straighten this leg, keep the other one as it is, you can sit there and do the same. So it works a bit differently. Your toes pointing up. Feel more of a pull on your left side. And then once again when you come forward, see if you can stay there. Bend the other to the floor and release your head. As you breathe on, it's easy to ease. Much in distance. And then the next time you come forward and down, you can stay there for a few breaths. Up like that, and put your hands <coughs> by the inside of your knees to your top of your feet. Don't be pulling on them. As you breathe in, as you pull at them, you really bring your navel, your chest, your head up, your shoulders back. As you breathe on, try and take your forehead to the floor. You might not get there. Breathing in, you almost create a bit of a hollow back. Pulling onto your feet. And slowly, as you breathe out, coming forward and down. Extending the spine, sitting bones back, open your chest, pull, release. And you're feeling it again in your hip. Last one up. And stay down. For a moment, bring your feet together and you feel you have felt it there, add it and let go. I'm going to do a plow or we do a twist on the floor. And the plow you may want to use to walk. I find it easy because of proportion, so people can just drop into the plow and enjoy it. So do it your way.
can take your hands to your feet and, and your stay there. Let's do so. I won't stay there, so don't try. If your chin down, wriggle onto your shoulders if you can, straighten your legs. Support your back like me if you need it. Some of us actually need a big firm. If you press against the floor or the wall, you even put something underneath your feet, you, you get more of also a back stretch, the back of your leg. Chin torch, collarbone notch, shoulders back. Pressing slightly into the back of your skull. Try not to bring your chin too low. Whole body awareness. Shoulders back and down. Another five breaths. That should be easier. If you will, if you can't stretch your feet, just take breath. Bend your knees. And a double leg twist on your back. So come onto your back. Put your arms maybe wide, it's your shoulders at least if you need to have something under your head because it stops back or is put there. Now lift your lower back and take it two inches further to the right. Bring your right over the left. You can do the whole eagle one for the eagle one, otherwise keep your left foot on the outside of your right ankle and replace your left foot. Drop your knees, you keep your hips right and your torso full, your head slightly to the right. And as you breathe out, allow the, the, the leg to go further to the left, your head further to the right. Get that kind of ringing action, I call it. And then you ring out the cloth, they go on opposite sides. The upper trunk goes to the right, the lower trunk further to the left. And it's like to keep the lower legs easier. And just keep your belly soft, release the shoulders, face relaxed and allow gravity to do it. You drop your hands. If you breathe out, allow the twist to ring a bit more, the ringing action. Feel that you're releasing. Comfortable breath, natural breath. There's no hole in your core. Maybe five more. One of those passive letting go stretches. Undoing tightness. Slowly come back. Uncross. Keep the lower back back to the right. Those two inches. To the center, sorry. To the center. And then two inches to the left. Left over right. Look at the bottom of your line a bit your way. Bring the right leg on the floor. And then begin to drop your right knee to the left knee to the floor. Slightly foot away further. Roll your head to the left. Release the shoulders. Again, get that ringing action. Your upper trunk to the left, your lower trunk to the right. If you want to like, keep it further to the right. And use your exhalation to really draw into the twist. Get the action on the left side part. Start lifting the chin, keep your head center. And roll into the left. Possible ground for left shoulder. Whole body awareness as you breathe and drop. Feeling that resistance as you let go. Let's 
three more breaths. Bring it back to center, knees up and cross. Your lower back is gone a little bit, two inches to the left. And then our stomach going to stretch. For a moment, circle your knees into figure eights just to get your lower back. We're going to do a sitting, calming breath. So we're going to feel our own pulse. But if you need to put something on now, so make sure you're comfortable, some of you may want to sit again for support. So if you can, it's just what the ancient yogis, I mean I'm also trained, I read it, but I don't really read it because I feel it should be rather medical doctors who that. But they used to be able to pick up whatever was happening in your body which was wrong or which is right by simply having those three fingers against I think it's the first artery. Um, I put them so much to the surface, I just have to do that and I can feel it. Some of you might have to dig a bit deeper. So you take your palm underneath your right hand, you take your index finger, middle finger, and ring finger together against the first artery. And you'll get the pulse. If you can't get it, just do ordinary yoga breathing, but I'd like you to just. So close your eyes, you keep your eyes open, it doesn't matter, but just begin to feel that pulse. Drop your shoulders, stay comfortably upright. And as you breathe, a natural, comfortable yoga breath to the belly, no forcing. Just connect at the same time with the pulse inside of your body. Feel that pulsing against your fingertips. You may want to sort of create a rhythm. Maybe you just want to feel it, so you connect to the inside of your body. Pulse. But you could also maybe have six or eight pulses as you breathe in. Same as you breathe out. Without straining. If you can get a rhythm, six in, six out, or eight in, eight out, or four, whichever comes naturally, and it depends on how fast you're breathing. Don't worry if your pulse is particularly regular. Just an exercise, it's settling again. You now don't hardly have to press to feel it, you don't have to press too hard. It's nice if you can bring your can't in your mind in harmony with your pulse. Just allow it to happen. A few more times. 
go of your mind to listen to the counting. Two more breaths. Go. Hope you have calmed you down. Quietly lie down. Let go. Connect the thumb and the index finger lightly. Consciously release your ankles. Your feet drop away from the midline. And make sure they're wide enough apart. If you need to put something underneath your knees, because they prefer that position for your back, and put something under. Release your calves, thighs, your lower trunk, your lower back. With both your legs, your feet, your ankles, and your knee joints are released. Feel the spine against the floor on your mat, the shoulder pads, the ribs. Feel the spaciousness within your ribs for your heart, your lungs. Feel that the space for spleen, stomach, liver, all the various organs which are inside of you. They should be comfortable, released. So your chest comes up, your belly softens, intestines, everything has got its comfortable space. You should let it go. Feel the upper arms, elbows, forearms, your wrist and your fingers, and the back of your hands. Allow them to become heavy and relax with the rest of your body. And then feel the skull. Sometimes it helps to just lift your head for a second and then release it again. So you can really allow its weight as your brain to release. And then feel that your features soften. Perhaps open your mouth and then release. Release your eyes, contract them and release them. If your tongue can rest on the upper palate. Jaw soft, your temple soft, your cheeks released. Sinking into gravity without resistance. And then move into that witness state. Letting go of everything else. The witness is the part of you that's always there and steps back, observes, doesn't judge, allows. Go of your thoughts. Comfortable. Just focus on that stepping back into that higher sense of self. No thoughts, no emotions for a moment, just equanimity. Creating the present moment as it is, accepting it and yourself as it is. Inhabit it. It, allow it, expand into it. Become spacious and light. You should connect with the divinity within you. Now, as you allow your mind to flow with the music, see if you can separate the one who listens from the music.
begin to feel the floor as you rest in it, the earth. Feel it pressing against your back, your legs. Moving your fingers, perhaps rolling your head from side to side. If you take a nice deep breath into your heart. Make sure you open your eyes. Whether rolling onto your side or bringing your knees to your chest and circle them. Becoming aware of your surroundings. The weight and warmth of your body. You need to stretch, give yourself a stretch and then come back into a sitting position. This was number 12. We're going to go into winter at the end of this week. Start the lockdown beginning of autumn. So we could just be in here already for virtually the whole season. Thank you. I hope you practice. I get very little feedback. That's said, not even on one hand. So always appreciate those of you who do. Namaste. My name.